Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, we are out on the launch pad again today, continuing our uh, transfer window to Jupiter launches. Uh, this is the Clarkson. It is the sister mission to uh, the one we launched previously, uh, and it is its destination, I should say, is uh, Neptune. So, one more slingshot than before. We'll just uh, make sure our HG3s fire up at the same time as our boosters. Our relative inclination of the moon is at an appropriate level. So hopefully we'll get uh, this flight going a, uh, much more seamlessly than our previous flight. All right. um, weird strutting thing keeps happening on this uh, variant of the DN series, but it doesn't really seem to affect anything, so I've kind of just chosen to ignore it. Right. We are clean off our brand new upgraded launch pad. Uh, it does look pretty, very pretty. Uh, we're still waiting about another 190 or so days for our uh, VAB to be upgraded. It should give us a little more room to work so that we can start working on uh, really, really big stuff send 100 tons to Mars. We're going to need uh, all the rooms we can get. Anyway, uh, I'm going to uh, start my gravity turn way too late because I wasn't paying attention again. Good for me. All right, I'm going to get this little guy to orbit and I will pick all of you up there. And well, as mentioned before, this is the uh, sister mission uh, to the James May. Uh, the spacecraft itself is uh, pretty much identical, um, which is good. It's simple and it was easy to build. Uh, I did express some concerns uh, in the last episode about the range of the antenna dish, which caused me to go uh, searching through the config files for the parts and the uh, RSS update information, but the uh, the range listed in the persistent file, um, I think it was uh, 1E plus 14. It's booster set. Cleaning it away, that's good. Uh, it should give us plenty of range to, uh, to do this mission. When compared to uh, other long range antennas, um, we should be good. So, all uh, other antenna range concerns now off the table. I'm confident that these uh, flights can go ahead and proceed as normal. And there you see the uh, Pro itself has booted itself. Uh, we have our, our, our RCS booms extended, our antenna activated and targeting Earth. So, we, uh, so far so good. Uh, a nice clean launch for our uh, DN. We'll just uh, go ahead and make sure to lock all these tanks so we're not draining RCS fuel from the probe itself when we go to Ullagen this uh, J2 to make our transfer. And again, I plotted way too shallow on our ascent trajectory, causing me to need to angle up uh, quite significantly. Uh, just about the 45 degrees or so to make sure that we don't start uh, plummeting back to Earth uh, a little too soon. Then we can manage our time to apogee uh, appropriately to make uh, orbit this particular mission. It's always nice when there's really just uh, nothing much to report as far as the launch is, uh, stage is concerned. Um, the failure of the HG-3 last flight did uh, worry me a bit. It's really the first actual failure of one of these engines that we've had to deal with. And, well, it's starting to make me quite nervous, because after talking with the mod author a little bit, apparently the reliability should be uh, somewhere around the uh, the NK-33 series, which anybody who's been watching Tyler Riez's series uh, uh, in Kerbal Space Program RSS 1.1.3 will realize that that is a very, very high failure rate. So either I'm really, really lucky, or I don't know, maybe we've just got the, all the relevant research data on these a, a little earlier than we should have. But uh, I did, uh, I have been flying these engines a lot lately. So the fact they're starting to fail now and not before is a little weird, but you know what? Uh, I've, I've gamed the system before and I will continue to do so. Anyway, we're coming up on the end of this burn, so I'm going to turn you back over to uh, old me for some live commentary. Oh no, we've got an engine failure. A total failure. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Shut down. Uh, looks like Gimbal is handling the rest of it. Uh, we're actually still... flying. This is me. Wow. Uh does seem extraordinarily weird to me that we had two HG3s fail in 
two subsequent missions, but, um... I don't know, I guess all that good luck is catching up to us. Stage set. Ignition. And this is a J2 series, so we should get excellent reliability out of this. But uh, we don't have too much further to go to hit orbit anyway. So we'll just try to even out our heading. Uh, I wonder if I was pushing those past the rated burn time. Very interesting. I'm going to have to check the run times on that stage for sure. Alright, there's our camera change. Shut down. 203 by 163. Not bad. I'll take it. Alright, so we can put away our rendezvous planner, and just like last time, now we're going to set our new target for Jupiter and start to play with a lot of nodes. Set as target. Planner. Just let pork chop do its thing. Maybe. Okay. Lowest delta V says departure in two days. Let's go ASAP. Not much of a difference. Create node. Fair enough. That actually looks like an appropriate ejection angle. It's very interesting. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll just run with that. 7.55 or 7. 6.775 meters per second. And wow, board cube. All right. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and try to get ourselves angled in now. Um, yeah. Depending on when you ask, Mechjeb, we're either just above or just below six kilometers per second left in this tank. Uh, shouldn't be much of an issue to do that last kilometer on these tanks. We saw it have good success last time, so, you know, fingers crossed and stuff. We seem to have the super interesting extra gimbal range enabled on our J2 right now. Uh, it could be that we, there's a little gap between it and the tank, no big deal. Just gets a little wonkier and a little wonkier every time. Alright, and there's node. Uh, just about 46 minutes or so until we can light this candle. So we'll just uh, take a quick tour. We might come a little close there with our periapsis. I mean, we did last time too, but we didn't actually get within the atmosphere. So let's just make sure our J2 is stable. Ignition. Good light on the J2. Little snap torque there, but no big deal. Now if you could just uh, stay on the node. I'm going to hold down the H key to fire these thrusters and... Hopefully this burn will go nice and smooth. And good. And our periapsis is rising. And now we're descending. Okay. It's not falling very fast. We're not pitched too far below the horizon. So I'm going to just stop worrying about it. Instead try to find a nice angle to watch all this go by. That one's not too bad. And, as expected, with this uh, S4B upper stage, uh, or the B upper stage as far as it's concerned, the uh, DN series rockets, uh, it went super smooth and uh, pretty much all according to flight plan without uh, any really interesting failures or anything else of interest to report. So here's me rambling incessantly about how amazingly well this stage performs. Stage step and ignition of our AJ-10. Much better than last time. Considering we both have contact and I remembered to unlock the fuel. Good for me. 
Now it's just this AJ-10 burn that takes um, absolutely a long time. Uh, really, the the burn time just on this is uh, greater than the uh, J-2 burn time. But it's a good thing this thing has uh, unlimited runtime and unlimited ignitions, which is super awesome. So we've already got our encounter, and it looks like I'm overshooting it by quite a bit because now we're coming in on the wrong side of Jupiter. This should have been something that maybe I could have paid attention to a little earlier and avoided some of these future hassles. All right, well, we are within four meters per second. We do have an encounter with Jupiter, but it does look like we're going to come in on the wrong side, and it's going to slow us down. And I can't... There we go. Can we... Yeah, we're totally coming in on the wrong path here. So this is going to require some more immediate corrections. Uh, so I will promptly hit all the wrong buttons. And let's see if we can't get this... Uh, steered a little better for us. Nope, further out. There we go. Alright. So now then, we'll bring up our node and... Yeah, wow. Yeah, of course, it's not going to show us uh, ejection predictions because we're still in Earth's SOI, but I'd say that looks a whole lot better, and if we can correct it now, then we totally should. It's only 210 meters per second. Jeez. We have to make a correction before we can make our corrections. Alright, good. Engine is lit. I want to see what that's... No, it's not even going to show us our... Because the node's in here. That's... It used to show us that our orbit... In relation to the sun was getting a uh, a lot closer in. Oh man, there was another encounter, with, and there was another encounter with Ganymede. Those are not on our objective list. We have done flybys of these moons before. Heartbreaking, I know. All right, we're just gonna kill it there. Going to go just outside Earth's SOI to plot the next node. Yeah, or not. You know, whatever. Yes, Earth I would like to set as a target. Oh, I love it when it does this. Uh, not that it matters a whole hell of a lot. I'm not going to have time to guide this beyond Earth's SOI. Because uh, we have the Origami 3 arriving at Jupiter in about 12 hours. So we need to go pay attention to that before we can deal with you. Um, I am going to set an alarm for your SOI change, which is in one day, two hours. Because then we can come back and plot the node. Although I have this feeling like I will be super busy. Okay, good. And I did set up nodes for everything else. So, uh, well, we can... We can stay for a little bit, just to appreciate how pretty this is. Wow. <laughs> anyway, we'll just let this take its slow fade. That's going to do it for this one, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.